Firstly, welcome to today's event. My name is Sam, I'm from Prosper. Um, we're helping to host today's event. Um, before we get started any further, I would like to firstly um, acknowledge and pay respects to the traditional custodians of this land. Um, for me here in Melbourne, uh, that is the Wundjeri and the Boon Wurrung peoples. Um, I'd also like to pay respect to elders, past, present and emerging. Um, but with me today, I've got Kelly and Connor from the National Indigenous Australians Agency, um, who are going to give you a bit of insight into the graduate program, a little bit more about what NIAA does. Um, but most importantly, we'll answer your questions. Um, for those of you who haven't been to one of our live Q&As before, my suggestion is to start getting your questions ready and organised and write them in the chat function. Um, if you can write them in, the, if you can also mention in the chat function whether or not you're happy to read them out yourself. Um, I know that is the preference. We definitely want to hear, hear your voices and see some faces and the like. But if your camera's not working or your microphone's not working, or you just don't feel comfortable, no stress. Just just let me know in the chat function as well, maybe in brackets. Hey Sam, I prefer if you read this out, and I'll do that for you. Um, but without further ado, I might um, throw to Kelly first of all to give us a bit of a spiel about yourself and NIAA. Thanks, Sam. Um, g'day, everyone. Uh, I too would like to echo um, my respect um, to the traditional owners of the land across the country. Um, we're calling in from Ngunnawal country here. Um, I'm a born and bred Canberran and consider myself very lucky to live on this land. Um, we're also privileged to work in an agency that has a presence across Australia. So I would like to extend that respect to all the traditional owners across Australia and particularly for, uh, to you and where you're calling in um, from today. Um, so we're here to talk to you a little bit about the National Indigenous Australians Agency. For those of you that don't know, it was established in 2019, uh, following the elevation of the Minister for Indigenous Affairs, the Honourable Ken Wyatt, to the Cabinet. Um, and in July 2019, the agency was um, established. So it's pretty exciting. Essentially, it's the, the lead Commonwealth agency for all matters Indigenous affairs. So uh, we have a vast responsibility. Some of the key priorities you might be familiar with uh, the, the voice to parliament. They're heavily consulting um, across the country on that at the moment. Things like the, the closing the gap targets, constitutional recognition, um, and of course, all, all the, the social elements um, of policies um, that relate to this important agenda. Essentially, our purpose um, is to improve the lives of Indigenous Australians. And, and we, we do that um, by, by being a sort of a trusted and reliable partner. So we, we partner with um, communities and organisations and state governments and other Commonwealth agencies to uh, better the lives of Indigenous Australians. So um, it's extremely complex, um, but uh, important um, agenda that the agencies focus on. Um, we've got about 1,200 staff across the country in about 67 locations. So everything from all the capital cities right through uh, regional and remote and some very um, remote areas, parts of Thursday Island, Sejuna, Nullaboy, um, et cetera. So it's um, a pretty vast um, profile that we have. Um, but in terms of the, the graduate program, um, it's a pretty exciting opportunity to get such a taste in, a, in an agency that has um, such diverse uh, policy um, agenda as well as uh, delivery and implementation. So we offer a 12 month um, program, which consists of three rotations, um, which you're able to sort of nominate and put your preferences in for. So you can sort of shape your graduate program to, to what you are interested in, what skills and experience you have, etc. Um, and as one of those rotations, you have the option to do a, a regional rotation um, in, a, in an area outside of Canberra. So that can be a metropolitan office or it can be, as I mentioned before, regional, quite remote areas um, to really see that on the ground impact of uh, stakeholder engagement and, and service delivery that is part um, of the agency. Um, we offer an extensive induction program as part of the program, as well as um, a learning and development sort of structured program that makes sure you're, I guess, gathering the skills along the way and the opportunities to implement them on the job, um, as well as making sure you've got 
buddies, um, mentors, all of the support um, that you'll need to, to navigate um, your introduction to, to the public service and, and to the agency. Um, but I think that's probably enough of a bit of an overview. So I might throw to Connor here, who's one of our previous graduates, to tell you a little bit about his experience. <coughs> sure. Thanks, Kelly. Um, so yeah, hi, everyone. I was a grad last year in 2020. Um, and before I start, speak, I'll speak a bit about the three rotations that I did. Um, but before that, I'll just add to what Kelly said that um, there's, if you've got any sort of vague interest in Indigenous affairs policy, um, there'll be something for you at the NIAA. Like um, there's a need for Indigenous specific policies and programs um, across so many areas of government. So like health, education, um, economic policies, um, even like justice and reintegration, even though it's a state responsibility, largely there's work in that space at the NIAA too. Um, so, you know, even if your background is in, you know, one of those areas or another area um, and you haven't, uh, you know, done Indigenous studies or, or something like that at university, um, if you have an interest in Indigenous affairs, then I would really encourage you to apply and there'll be something for you at the NIAA. Um, so the three rotations that I did on well, my first rotation, I'll start with that. Um, I was working on the, the voice to government. Um, which some of you may have heard of if you sort of um, keep up with the commentary on Indigenous affairs. It's a massive, uh, I guess, project that's underway uh, that the government is co-designing with Indigenous Australians. Um, and that's, it's like, it's a mammoth task. Uh, and I was working on the local and regional aspect of it. So the proposal is to have um, local and regional voices uh, that's kind of for Indigenous Australians to speak to various levels of government around the country uh, and then also a national voice um, that is proposed to speak to the parliament. Um, and this push to, to co-design policies and programs with Indigenous Australians is um, kind of coming through across government at the moment, uh, which is something that's really interesting to see. And I sort of came straight into that um, and there's certainly still plenty of work to do in that space um, to kind of change the way the government works so that we work genuinely in partnership with Indigenous Australians, but um, there is a will to do it. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting to see that happening. Um, and working on The Voice was a good place to start. My second rotation uh, was in the land branch um, and I was in the land rights policy team, uh, which I really enjoyed. And I think I'm going to settle there. Um, at the end of the grad program. I'm sort of just at the tail end of it now. Um, so in that rotation, I was working largely on um, stuff related to the Aboriginal Land Rights Act, Northern Territory, which is a Commonwealth piece of legislation um, under which Indigenous Australians in the Northern Territory have, um, have land rights. Uh, it's actually the legislation that is talked, talked about in From Little Things, Big Things Grow by Paul Kelly, if any of you are familiar with that song. Um, and the famous image of Gough Whitlam pouring dirt into the hands um, of a traditional owner. Uh, that's, that's all kind of the story that led to the establishment of this legislation, which is still really important today. Um, and there's a lot of work that the Commonwealth does in that space. Um, if, if any of you have studied law, uh, you might be familiar with uh, native title, which is actually run out of the Attorney General's department, most of the native title work that Commonwealth does. Um, and the land branch at the NIAA is more concerned with um, the Land Rights Act in Northern Territory, as well as a few other smaller pieces of legislation. Um, my third rotation was in uh, the legal area at the department, or the, at the agency. Um, so I was in the land and public law team um and they kind of op so i've got a law degree um which i absolutely don't don't need uh to do the grad program and i didn't uh you certainly don't need it to work in land branch even though i was working on um you know issues that arise in connection with that legislation i was discussing um but my rotation in the legal area if any of you do have a law degree i'd recommend doing one there if you end up at the agency um 
they essentially operate as in-house lawyers for the agency uh, and kind of uh, for the minister, I guess, um, and give advice to different areas of the agency on uh, the legality of things that they're proposing to do or what the minister's powers might be under certain legislation um, and things like that. And I think you can do your PLT, um, your practical legal training um, in that area as well. So if you need your hours, they can certainly facilitate that for you. That's right. And that is one of the reasons that I was there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that did get me over the line with my GDLP in the end, thankfully. Um, yeah, so uh, I don't know. I would reiterate what I said just before. Um, I think it's really important to know that, like, you know, I can imagine that some of you might feel like, oh, there must be so many people out there who have studied things that are really, um, you know, tailored to this sort of um, program and working in this space. But uh, there are plenty of people who are in my cohort who had never done anything kind of Indigenous specific at university. I'm pretty much one of them. Um, I did history as well as law, and it was through studying history that I became really interested in this policy area. But um, that was mainly in my honours year of history, which I was doing, um, which I did the year before commencing the grad program. So in the application process and, and things like that, I don't think I really had um, much to talk about in that regard because um, I, was, I was still kind of doing that work and only just really developing the strong interest. So, um, yeah, certainly don't feel like um, you're not going to be qualified enough to apply or anything like that. Yeah, I think that's a good point, Connor. I think, you know, while we have some amazing experts in Indigenous affairs that work in the agency and some people that have worked in Indigenous affairs for 30, 40 years that, you know, are just inspiring to learn from, the, the general culture of the agency is people that are just passionate about making a difference. Um, and, and we see that play out, as Connor said, across so many different social policy um, areas, but not to, you know, I, I look after, I work in our corporate area, so we also have a corporate screen um, as part of our graduate program. So, you know, there's still a lot of those professional roles. Um, we've obviously mentioned the legal area, but, you know, our finance area, HR area, we have... Um, forward and compliance sections, a lot of those sort of professional type areas as well. So our graduate program has the, the corporate stream um, as well as, for lack of a better word, the generalist stream, but it's very much program policy, service delivery, um, all of those sorts of um, functions. But um, because of the, the general purpose that people want to make a difference, it's a, it's a pretty special place to work with a, a culture um, of people that are um, extremely diverse but motivated um, and passionate uh, to make a difference. Yeah, awesome. for sure. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Connor. That was a great wider intro. I'm not sure if you had any more to add there, Connor, before we jump into the live Q&A. Nah, I didn't. I was just uh, yeah. agreeing. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we'll jump into the the you know the, the, the good, exciting part, not that it wasn't exciting, uh, part of the Q&A, which is the Q&A part itself. Um, I've got a couple of questions here from Claire, which part of that's already been covered, but I might just refire it off, um, particularly at, or at you both, just to make sure we're, we're across it all. Um, then Clara, I'm going to throw to you next as well, because I think you got a great question there. But for those who haven't put a question in already, get them into the chat function. Let me know if you'd prefer for me to read it out, or if you're happy to read it out yourself. Uh, either or works, but I definitely know um, Kelly and Connor are probably keen to see some faces and make this a conversation. Um, and I'm sure no one wants to hear me speak too much. So um, definitely, definitely speak it out if you can. Um, but I might throw, um, I'll, I'll, I'll whip through these questions pretty quickly. But um, Kelly, in terms of transferring, I think the question here is, um, can graduates transfer between the departments during the program? Well, I think it's maybe more so you know, between the agency and maybe other departments. Don't, can you give some context uh there? Yeah, that's right. So I guess the, the general principle would be to move around within um, our agency, whether that's about different groups, um, different policy areas, as well as different locations um, of offices. Um, however, we also have a range of Indigenous portfolio agencies that are in our remit. So you might be familiar with the um, the um, Office of Township Leasing and the um, 
Office of the Register of Indigenous Corporations, um, better known as ORIC. Um, they sort of uh, have NIAA staff in them, so they are another agency that there's an option to rotate through. But we also have close relationships with the other Indigenous um, portfolio agencies. If you think about the um, uh, Indigenous Businesses Australia, the Australian Institute of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander um, Studies, the Torres Strait Region um, uh, Authority, etc. Um, we certainly could facilitate some of the connections for possible rotations um, through those. We are also in talks um, with the um, Australian Public Service Commission to see what um, some inter-agency rotations looks like in terms of service delivery. And so what we see now is the, the public service is becoming more agile. So in, in times um, of um, critical response, so we saw it with COVID-19 um, and we're seeing it now with the flood, um, the flood um, response, um, they're calling for people to um, move agencies to support those um, efforts in a, a surge capacity for a short period of time. So certainly some of our graduates um, went to, to Services Australia um, previously to help with the COVID-19 response and we've got some graduates that will be going to help with the flood response. So um, while it's not sort of offered as a standard offering, it happens a little bit organically, but if there was um, an individual with a particular interest, then um, we'd certainly be open to having that conversation to facilitate something. Um, so yeah, the public service is becoming far more fluid. So um, yeah, I think it's definitely an option that we would be happy to explore with individuals. Awesome. Um, building off that, I think you'd, you mentioned before in terms of rotations, um, do grads start in Canberra? Is uh, like the offer just for Canberra and then they do regional um, placements? Yeah, that's right, Sam. So we, um, the, it's definitely a Canberra sort of based program and that enables us to bring all the graduates and we offer relocation um, assistance as well um, to Canberra to form a cohort um, because those relationships, and I'm sure Connor can speak to this, are sort of invaluable to, as you navigate your career. Um, and then, the, you know, in the induction and making sure the foundation's there within the agency and the public service. And then for the second and third rotations, that's where we look outside of Canberra. But I don't know if you wanted to touch on sort of the, the cohort relationships and yeah. induction component. Yeah, so um, I moved over from Adelaide for the grad program. Didn't know anyone in Canberra. Uh, and I'm certainly happy that I moved um, into a, yeah, a grad program uh, with a bunch of people who are in a similar position uh yeah lots of people uh from interstate uh looking to make friends and things like that uh so i certainly felt well supported because of that um uh, far better supported than i'd, I'd imagine i would have um if i if i might have you know started a job somewhere else not as part of a graduate cohort um so definitely a big advocate for the Commonwealth Government grad programs for sure. Mm. And I should have said at the start, I was actually a grad 10 years ago in a Commonwealth department um, and some of my um, yeah, grads that I were in my cohort, um, uh, some of my best friends in it, we've seen sort of progress through the ranks um, together. So they become invaluable networks from not only a personal perspective, but a professional perspective too. So bringing everyone to Canberra for the first few months is um, what we have found critical to building those relationships. Awesome. Um, next question here is about leave. Um, what sort of leave that's available for graduates in the, in the program and maybe pastoral care more, more broadly? Yeah, sure. Um, so just to set the scene, I guess most Commonwealth agencies um, uh, conditions are set out in enterprise agreements or sometimes in determinations, which is a sort of a tie over period. Um, our agency is currently um, bargaining at the moment for our new enterprise agreement that we're hoping to have in place um, this year. Um, so I can talk about the current entitlements, um, but it is possible that they will change slightly. Um, but basically, and it, the information is on our, our website in set out in the enterprise agreement, but essentially um, everyone is entitled to, I'm going to get these in the wrong reverse order, but I think it's 20 days annual leave and 18 right. days personal leave, which is sick leave, carers leave, um, et cetera. Um, in addition, you'll see in our um, enterprise agreement, we do have some other special types of leave, such as compassionate 
um, leave as you know when you're moving house um, as well as we have cultural um, leave available for sorry business um, and the like we also have some leave that's available for NADOC um, week um, there's obviously um, things like maternity leave adoption leave um, a um, range of things when you're a when you're a grad two when you're at sort of uh, the lower levels um, as a public servant you get flex time um, which means your standard number of hours per day is seven hours 36 at least it can it can differ across departments but i believe that's what it is for us yeah. um and if you work more than that then you accrue flex time um and that can bank up and then sort of you know add up to a day every now and then and you have a day off um yeah and i would say from my experience last year that the culture I think the culture within the public service generally is like quite healthy in relation to um, expectations as to how many hours you work and things like that. Uh, and at the NRAA in particular, um, you're encouraged to, you know, there's certainly no, there are certainly no unhealthy expectations. Um, and yeah, you're encouraged to look after yourself and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I always found it and take your flex time when, when you bank it up and encouraged to, enter your hours properly if you ever do you know work a bit longer on a certain day or whatever so that you get to take that flex time later on yeah I think um the, that work-life balance is is really encouraged um at the agency and in one other component of leave that um I didn't mention was around study leave and obviously um while you're on the graduate program that's quite different because you're under quite structured learning and development but um particularly when you come off the graduate program, we have extensive study leave um, and study assistance um, support that's available to employees as well. But um, yeah, the enterprise agreement that's available on our website details all of them because there's probably a couple of leave types that we've left off, but it, it is um, yeah, a, a generous offering in terms of conditions. Fantastic. Um there's a question here about how long the program is. That's 12 months, I think you were saying before. So I'll skip through that one. Um, the final question from Claire relates to one from Josephine as well, which is, well, Claire's specific question is about, is there room for someone with environmental science in the, in the agency? And there's another question here from Josephine about um, psychological science and criminology, um, how that relates to the agency. Um, maybe, I mean, if, if you've got any specific ideas about those two degrees, feel free to answer that, Kelly and Connor, but maybe just remind the team again about um, the broadness of the, the type of students you're looking for, because it's no set degree that you're really not open to. Is that right? That's right. I, I would encourage um, people from all disciplines. There's certainly something in the agency that you would be able to use your skills um, and experience for. If we turn our mind um, to the individual reference ones, the environmental science one obviously intersects a lot with the, the land area. Yeah, so um, there's a, there's a, we've got two branches with the name land in them and they're both in the economic policy and programs division. Um, yes, I think group, one is more group. around land management, <laughs> one's more around land rights. So the land yeah. management one would particularly be um, a connection and That's I know right. they do um, some of the, the fire management, mm -hmm. um, you know, dealing with understanding some of the cultural ways and how we can learn, um, in, you know, from elders and traditional owners of how they sustain um, the land and those sorts of things. Yeah, so that branch is called the Land, Water and Environment branch. Um, so that, yeah, they do some of that sort of work. They oversee uh, programs through which Indigenous ranges are funded um, and, and more, uh, which I haven't had direct experience of, but I'd say that there's certainly a place for someone um, with that degree in the agency. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, there's plenty of work going on in that branch, so. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What was the other one? Criminology? Criminology and Sight. Yeah. Yep. Um, I actually did Criminology as my other major for my arts degree with his, along with history um and I didn't I didn't really use it last year um I didn't uh do any rotations through um the justice and reintegration area but we do have work going on in that space at the agency um as I mentioned before uh kind of criminal justice is um more of a state and territory responsibility 
but there is work for the Commonwealth to do in that space. There are also like um, the National Agreement on Closing the Gap. There are targets related to justice um, in that. Uh, and I guess uh, for the psychology aspect, um, there's a lot of work on Indigenous health that's run out of the Department of Health. Um, but there's also a mental health and wellbeing area at the agency um, that comes that uh, works on Indigenous specific policy in that space. So I guess um, your psychology degree, I mean, I'm not sh exactly sure what you've done, but could be used there. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there's a lot of um, Indigenous specific um, programs, you know, things like the, the prison to work program and um, mm. some of those sorts of ones, as well as um, there's a big focus on the Northern Australian Development Task Force and part of sort of the Northern Territory response and sort of um, incarceration and, and those sorts of things certainly are um, front and centre of those sorts of conversations. But, you know, I, I don't know too much about criminology, but in terms of psych and understanding people and human behavior and that that's going to be you know transferable across any elements um, of the agency because um, you know we're about improving the lives um, of Indigenous um, Australians and um, understanding how people work and interact and um, those sorts of things would be absolutely transferable to to most areas um, obviously there's a we see a lot of psychologists end up in HR as well. So we have quite a strong HR function um, in our agencies. So that's worthy of considering as well, because not only do we have the external facing wellbeing function um, that Connor's referred to, we obviously have quite an extensive internal um, offering in terms of um, wellbeing support for staff. Fantastic. Um, I might throw to Clara next to, if you're still happy to take yourself off mute. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I was just wondering if it's common for graduates within their rotations, but I guess it's also beyond your graduate, graduate year if you do stay with the agency, uh, to liaise with state government policy spaces or if it's typically just the Commonwealth policy setting and um, initiatives? Um, that's a great question. I would say it depends on what uh, area of policy you're working on. Um, so in certain spaces, for example, probably the justice and reintegration space, I think there'd be a lot of work um, that you'd be doing with states and territories uh, because, for example, when you're administering, um, if the Commonwealth is administering a program like the prison to work program, um, that would essentially, my understanding is that that essentially sees us uh, provide funding to states and territories um, because they're the ones who are operating um, prisons. Uh, so yeah, it depends on what space you're in um yeah yeah so I think um there's a, a few elements to the answer in terms of you might be familiar with COAG um which is the Council of Australian Governments which brings together um all the state governments as well as the um Commonwealth Government and and we see a number of Indigenous matters go before um COAG to make sure we're working together because it has to be a coordinated effort to to get this right um and as Connor alluded to uh we fund some state organisations as well as um, service providers. So um, people might not be familiar, but there's um, $1.3 billion, which is in the Indigenous Advancement Strategy um, that our agency is responsible for administering. Um, so we work extremely closely. Um, if we think about um, education, healthcare, et cetera, um, the majority of those um, sort of frontline services are delivered by the state governments, but we have to make sure there's a coordinated effort, particularly when it comes things like the closing the gap targets and that um, to ensure uh, we are doing what is best for Indigenous Australians and I guess the important thing to note is that the majority of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people uh, actually utilise mainstream services so we have to work closely with not only our Commonwealth counterparts but our state counterparts to make sure that their services are fit for Indigenous people as well so um, I would say that the majority of the policy areas um, do interact pretty closely with state governments um, as well as community groups um, and those sorts of things. Yeah, that's that's right. It just so happened that in my rotations, I only in my voice rotation was I in that sort of situation, but you'd be right that it would be the majority of areas. Like 
through your grad year, I think relatively quickly, most of you would find yourself in a meeting at some point with state slash territory um, people. So, mm. yeah. And that's why um, we have a regional presence across Australia because we we need people on the ground working with um, communities, talking to stakeholders, talking to providers, talking to the state services um, to understand what is fit for purpose. So the, the intention is as much as possible to provide place-based solutions because what's um, fit for purpose in Redfern is going to be different to, to what's fit for purpose um, in the Kimberleys. Um, so we that's why we have such a vast presence on the ground to be really first-hand engaging with those stakeholders and listening to community and, and helping them navigate um, the, the services and support that's available and, and making sure um, we're consultative um, in, in everything that we do and we do it together and that's obviously the essence of the voice and the co-design um, process to make sure we're, we're hearing the voices across the country um, and delivering um, services policy programs that um, will work and, and will improve the lives of Indigenous Australians. Great thank you that was very informative I appreciate it. Thanks thanks for the question. I might go to Harrison's question next, which I'll, I'll read out, um, which is in the NIAA executive order, it says one of your roles is to analyze and monitor the effectiveness of programs and services for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people. Um, the question is, how do you measure your effectiveness and do grads get to be involved in this? Yeah, well, we do. We have a couple of areas that are dedicated to um, evaluation. Um, in the agency um, and so there's certainly opportunities to do rotations um, through those areas. I'm sure um, the, the question is probably alluding to the fact of how difficult it is to, to measure um, some of those sorts of things but I know the, the new Closing the Gap report has a huge focus on data and measurability um, and so that is a bit of a shift uh, for the agency to find more ways um, to ensure uh, the the programs um, are as effective as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, like um, it depends whether or not you do a, a rotation in the evaluation area, I would say, as to whether or not you get to work on it, but that's certainly an option. Um, and, yeah, Kelly's right. The, um, the part of the new national agreement on closing the gap is that there's a yearly report done by the Productivity Commission on, um, on how things are going, uh, which, so yeah, there's gonna be an increase in focus going forward on data and evaluation, um, yeah. Yeah, and I think, you know, every area is about evidence-based um, policy and constant review um, and review. So um, even though, you know, you can work in those specific areas that specialise in that. So I think there, there would be data um, and review components to, to most areas because that's just good practice in policy or, or programs. But, um, yeah, there, it's certainly early days in terms of the, the closing the gap stuff, so working out what are the, the, the useful data points and, and how do we um, measure and the, the integrity of, of those. Um, but, yeah, there's certainly a lot of opportunities in evaluation and those sorts of things across the agency. Clara, it looks like you got another question. If you want to take yourself off mute again. Okay, thank you. I just had a follow-up question with regards to um, regional placements and interstate placements throughout the program. Are they competitively selected or is it a preferential based system? Just because I've had a lot of research experience in the Kimberleys, for example. So you know, if I were to work at the agency, that would be um, a great opportunity for me to start applying um, the Commonwealth perspective on policy. So um, is it um, just preferential or what's the selection process like? Yeah, so we certainly make sure that every grad that wants to do a regional rotation has the opportunity to do so. So uh, if, if, if your personal circumstances um, allow it and it is your preference, then you can absolutely do um, a, a regional rotation. In terms of where they are, that is driven a little bit by the, the business and um, also the weather and, and those sorts of things um, come into play as well. Um, so the 
rotation and um, the preference process for the regional rotations is the same as it is for the, for the rest of the agency essentially each rotation um, we we go out to areas and seek nominations and then all of the nominations that we get of the areas that are interested in hosting a grad they write a bit of a, a summary as to what the role would involve and then so say we might get 30 nominations um, from the areas and there might be 15 grads say um, and then you are able to preference um, your grad um, rotation preferences, including normally you write for your first one, you do a, a little, it's just a short summary as to why you want it so that if other people put that as their first preference too, then the area would select who they think um, is a better fit for that rotation. So, um, you know, we do our best to accommodate people's um, preferences, but, you know, sometimes six grads might all want the same rotation. So you might not get your first preference, you might get your second or third preference. But, um, yeah, it's certainly um, the ability to influence and um, navigate the path that you want to take. I don't know if you want to reflect on your no, experience with the preferencing. I have nothing to add to that. Great, thank you. But we, we certainly do see grads go to the Kimberley. Um, we, we've got a, um, a, a, an office um, in, in Broome that um, many grads have been to throughout the years, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Now I've got a couple of questions from me for you for you both, Kelly and Connor. Um, if anyone else hasn't had a question in just yet, we've still got about 20 minutes or so, so make sure you start getting them in now. Um, otherwise you're gonna be hearing me speak a fair bit, so apologies for that. Um, my yeah, question for the both of you. Um, what is the most important piece of advice you'd give to students aspiring to work um, for both the NIA um, in the Indigenous space more broadly and also the Australian government? Um, bit of a three-parter there. Gee, advice. I don't know if I'm in a position to give advice yet. I'm still at the start. Um, but... Was well, there anything uh, you'd do differently? Um, and if you look cast your mind back to Connor 12 months ago or so, mm. um, what would you, you know, what, what would you tell him? Um, gee, oh, that's, that's tough. I, I don't know. Maybe just like um, relax, like it'll be all right. And uh, <laughs> everyone's nice and look after you, I would say about the NIAA. Um, and yeah, just, I don't know, have a go. Um, even, well, I would say that I was pretty pessimistic about my chances of getting into the program and, um, uh, you know, probably wondered at times whether it was worth applying. Um, so apply, have a go. Um, and there'll, yeah, there'll be something here for you. I guess actually something else I would say is that um, if you do have a genuine interest in working in Indigenous affairs, being at the agency is like, I think you could hardly start in a better place. Um, even if you don't, you know, want to stay in government forever or anything like that, um, you learn a lot about how government works, um, about how decisions are made, uh, and wherever you go in Indigenous affairs going forward, um, it's definitely really valuable knowledge to have. Um, you know, so if you if you ended up leaving the agency and going to an NGO or something like that, or a land council in Northern Territory, for example, um, the fact that you've been here would be so valued and you'd be well equipped to make more of a difference than you otherwise could, I would say. Yeah, I think um, that's a really great summary. Um, I think, have a go, as Connor said, um, be yourself, do your research, um, tailor your applications to the, the relevant agency. And I guess I'm a little bit biased. I have worked in a couple of agencies um, and NIAA is a pretty spe special place to work because of the culture and the people, but we're also quite unique in terms of um, the, the breadth of opportunity. So not only do I mean that in terms of the type um, of work you can do in terms of policy um, development programs, service delivery, um, corporate 
community engagement, et cetera, but the actual types of policy issues that you can also work on. So, um, you know, if we've, we've talked about a few of the other agencies like education and health and things like that, and while they do have variety in those opportunities, they don't cover the breadth um, of, of policy um, that we, we have in our agency. So, um, yeah, I think if, if you, you do want a, a holistic quite diverse opportunity um, if you're not quite sure exactly what you want to do and where you want to go an agency like ours does just provide such a platform of diversity um, that you can get in get a feel for it and then go in all kinds of directions I know you know when we've got grads that do go from anything from um you know in our, our fraud um area through to um suicide prevention through to um, some of the security and property and, and, and those sorts of things that, you know, you can really put a lot of tools in your tool belt to, to round yourself um, and put you on a, a path um, for your, your career, whether you stay in the public service or whether you go elsewhere. It really does give you a, a great platform to um, navigate a pretty open, diverse area. Um, so a, a couple of things that I also just wanted to mention is um, our agency is very focused on learning and development, not just through the graduate program, but more broadly. So we, we have a, a, a program that we have launched that is called the Footprints Program, and it's about continuous um, uh, cultural um, learning, not just about Indigenous cultures, but cultures more broadly. Um, and that's pretty unique to, to our agencies. We do have some agencies that are knocking on the door trying to, to get us to share it with them. And, and we will do that, um, of course. But it, it just gives you a sense of the, the culture in the place that it is about learning and professional development um, for everyone. So, um, yeah, the, that program offers... Um, you the ability to self-navigate your learning you have to get uh, 100 points um, a year a little bit like um, PLT or CDP points uh, for the CAs and CPAs amongst us um, but you know you might for example we watch a, a documentary and then get together with your team and, and, and talk about what that means and how it interacts with the work that the agency does and those sorts of things or we get guest speakers in or there might be brown bag lunches with some presentations. Um, sometimes there's cultural tours um, to some of the, the sacred areas as well as some of the exhibitions that happen across Canberra and those sorts of things. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to allude to the, the culture that the agency has in terms of um, the flexibility to um, navigate your own professional development um, is a pretty unique thing for us. I would, uh, if I can jump in again, sorry if we're going on for too long here. Um, I've been thinking more about the question that you initially asked of me, Sam. I don't know how we got here. But... Yeah, sorry, that was probably <laughs> No, I started leading us off track. Um, and it was, what would I say to myself, like this time last year? Um, and I remember when I first got off the position, I was actually doing a placement or like an internship type thing at um, South Australian Native Title Services. Again, this was after I'd done all the application stuff. So I didn't, I didn't have this experience during the application process and wasn't relying on it. But anyway, um, I got offered the position while I was there and I remember being a bit embarrassed telling people um, I'm going to go work for the Commonwealth and Indigenous Affairs because, um, you know, obviously the Commonwealth's been responsible for a lot of poor policy over the years uh, and still is seen today as... Um, you know, not doing things as well as we could. Um, and that bothered me a bit, but since being at the agency, you know, most people are there for the right reasons. Um, and there's, there's another big question that seems to have kind of um, come up more often over the past couple of years than it was before, which is what are public servants? Um, and depending on who you listen to, uh, you'll hear people say that, you know, public servants are there to implement the policy of the government of the day, and that's it. Um, now, that's absolutely true. Like, basically, the primary function of the agency is to um, help the Minister for Indigenous Australians to deliver on his objectives. But um, although that's the case, public servants uh, absolutely influence policy. Um, 
you know, when we draft a brief up to the minister, which is a typical task you might do um, on a given day, um, you're advising the minister on on what he should do. Uh, and it's no coincidence that our <clears throat> position title is policy advisor and not policy implementer. Um, so, you know, you can influence what happens as a public servant. I would say that's something um, that I probably needed to hear a year ago. Mm. Yeah, and I think that you've touched on it a few times, it's important to not rule yourself out. The agency is looking for people from all backgrounds, from all disciplines, um, but yeah, ultimately people that don't want to make a difference and that plays out in a range of ways. So if you're not sure, put your hat in the ring, go through the process and, and then make your decision. On the topic of, um, you know, put your hat in the ring, you're looking for students from a variety of backgrounds. Um, is there anything you can give us as a bit of a tip for the application process? Um, Callie O'Connor, any, anything that students can do to show um, to help them progress to the next round? Is there anything you're particularly looking for in a student? Um, I guess, you know, make sure you're familiar um, with the agency. Um, so, you know, have a look at our um, corporate plan, our internet site, et cetera, and, and tailor your application. So our application is intentionally uh, fairly easy to do in terms of we just want your CV and a very short, I think it's 200 word, um, uh, pitch about the the stream that you're um, interested in um, and so yeah I guess shape tailor don't I guess I've been in the position of grads and I've seen it before where obviously you'll be applying for multiple programs so take the time to to tailor um, your application um, and then as you progress through the stage you know for us we have a range of um, steps like most graduate programs in terms of some online um, testing and then um, cultivating in an assessment centre that sort of has a group activity and some um, interview questions. Um, you know, ultimately, any interview process is looking for why do you want to work at the agency and why do why you so it's you know why the agency and why you needs to be the key themes to any application that you put forward. Um, but obviously, Connie, you've gone through it more recently than me, um, and it changes from year to year a little bit. But do you have reflections on the process? Um, I don't know if I'd have anything to add to that. Yeah, I would echo what Kelly just said. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, um, yeah, I've already said it, but you don't need to have specific skills or knowledge in Indigenous affairs. Um, and you can draw on uh, experience, whatever experiences you have um, to demonstrate that you're a suitable person for the role. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. You know, more broadly, it's, you know, about diversity and inclusion and, and um, social policy and, and, and those sorts of things. So there's yeah, a lot of connections and it's about a willingness to learn um, and to, to get in and um, give things a go. So, yeah. Might be thrown under the bus a little bit, Connor, but I mean, obviously, you did that stuff with the South Australian government prior to, I think it's what you're saying, prior to after you'd already applied. <clears throat> um, so, how did, how did you articulate um, your why you want to work for NIA in the application? Yeah, process? A, that's a good question. Um, from memory, I just wrote slash spoke about how uh, I'm interested in Indigenous affairs and uh, I guess kind of social justice justice generally, noting that um, Indigenous Australians currently experience, um, you know, worse outcomes than non-Indigenous Australians uh, in so many areas. Um, and I was interested in, yeah, even just being interested in learning more uh, about the policy area is um, a good thing to demonstrate. Uh, really, I had very little specific, um, you know, knowledge or experience in the Indigenous affairs space, yeah. Mm. And, and so part of that to round off your application, I assume, um, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but you would have talked about your general um, skills that you have that you might have collected through previous work experience or, or uni life in terms of communication, teamwork, um, uh, project management and, and those sorts of things that we know are transferable 
um, to any kind of role. So yeah, that's right. Project management is definitely putting words in my mouth. I can't say I've got any sorry skills there. But yeah, no, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but you've developed them through the graduate program, I'm sure. Yeah, of yeah. course. <laughs> Awesome. Um, what you mentioned before, Kelly, sorry for throwing you under the bus there, Connor, but that was, um, couldn't pass that up. Um, Kelly, you mentioned the streams before. Um, can you give us a bit of context? I mean, maybe the both of you could probably do this, but a bit of context on the streams on offer at NIA, because I know they've got to obviously nominate which stream they want to be a part of. So maybe a bit of context on what they involve. Uh, yeah, so we have um, the, the two streams. So the, the first one is um, for graduates that are interested in working in policy program, service delivery, um, et cetera. So that would be the, the vast majority um, of our agency um, and the vast majority of positions that are um, available. But we also have a, a corporate stream, um, which... It, they're not hard boundaries either. Um, so just because you might go through the general stream doesn't mean you can't do a rotation in a corporate area or vice versa. In fact, I'd probably encourage it a little bit, but um, it is to make sure that we are um, bringing, attracting people from a range of disciplines and to help to just slightly tailor their experience and their rotations within the agency. So um, our corporate stream is generally through what we call our enabling um, areas of the agency. So um, within corporate, uh, I think we have five branches, um, people, legal, um, finance, and they also have a bit of IT component um, to them. There's an area that does the property security, business continuity. Um, and then we have a fraud and compliance um, area. So as I mentioned before, we obviously have a, a large amount of money going out that is um, provided to service delivery um, providers as well as state government. So we need to make sure that it is being used um, as it intended. So um, yeah, while we have these streams to sort of shape where you might do your rotations, it's absolutely flexibility to, um, to move around the agency regardless of what stream you, you come into. Awesome. Um, so we've got about five minutes or so remaining. Um, I'm going to throw another advice question your way. Um, I'm going to start with you again, Connor, um, just to be right. a bit mean. Um, less so advice about students before they've applied or before they've started the program. Um, for let, Let's say everyone on call here is successful and they all um, started the graduate program February of next year, I think it is, if I've got that correct. Um, what advice would you give them for their first year? Um, is there anything they shouldn't do? Is there anything they really should be doing? Um, yeah, start with you, Connor. Mm, I would say start thinking early about rotations. Um, here we go. This is something I should have said the first time you asked a similar <laughs> question. Um, and start talking to people in the areas that you might be interested in going to. Uh, and then that'll help you to make um, you know, the best decisions you can about where you go. Um, the grad year is actually like, to be honest, I sort of wish that my program was going for two years um, because having the opportunity to move around to a few different places uh, without having to commit to being there indefinitely is a really valuable chance to, you know, build your skills and experience. Um, and you want to make the most of it by um, doing rotations in the three areas that are going to be you know, best for you. And it's hard to know because uh, obviously we're all still working out, you know, what we're doing, what we're interested in. And, um, you know, you can only do three and I wouldn't mind doing a rotation rotation everywhere at the department really at the agency. Um, but uh, yeah, I would say start thinking about that early and speaking to people in areas you're interested in uh, and, and that'll help you to make the best decisions you can. Noting that you also have, aren't guaranteed your first preferences, but, um, you know, there'll be more than three things that you're interested in, so. Yeah. I, Same question, Kelly. Yeah. Um, so I guess my advice that I would give to graduates or anyone starting off their career is just to say yes and have a go. So as a graduate, you're in a privileged position that you get a lot of opportunities um, 
given to you that perhaps not all staff um, get. So there might be extra training opportunities, there might be surge things, there might be a call for assistance on a random project. Um, and don't hesitate, just put your hand up, give anything and everything um, a go you don't know I think quite often you know you look at org charts or corporate plans or even annual reports and you know to document on a piece of paper what um, agencies like ours do that are so extremely complex um, is impossible to do so often you know the, the name of a, a team or a policy does not even come close to um, explaining what that um, role does and you know so you've sort of got to get in and have a go um, to really fully understand and to, to to learn so yeah be open to any opportunity that comes um, across your plate and, and and get involved and you know it can sometimes be feel like you are sort of we're just getting your feet into the water each time, but it is a taste. And as Connor alluded to, it's an invaluable experience, you know, to have that opportunity to, to try things out in, in short bursts early in your career to find what you do and don't like. I, you know, I remember my grad year, I had my heart set on an area and I did a rotation in it and it turned out it wasn't actually what I thought it would be. And um, I've ended up completely different to where I thought I would be based on trying some things early in my career. So, um yeah, just be open and have a go. Final question for you both. Um, and then I think we'll call it quits there. Um, in 60 seconds or less, a couple of sentences, um, why should students apply for a, a graduate program within an IAA? Um, I'll let you decide who goes first. I can go. I think I've already, um, I'm just going to be repeating myself. Uh, because I really gave my plug um, when I was lost for an answer earlier on um, the fact that, the fact that uh, if you're interested in Indigenous affairs, like there's no better place to start your career than here, I would say, uh, even if you don't want to stay here forever. Um, yeah, the experience that you gain working here in terms of how government works, um, the politics of Indigenous affairs in terms of um, stakeholders, like different stakeholders, which is, you know, state and territory governments, but also um, Indigenous organisations, particularly with the, the kind of push to um, work in genuine partnership that's going on now, um, will help you, like, immeasurably going forward, uh, yeah, regardless of where you want to go. So um, that would be why I say you should apply. Kelly, same question. Yeah, thanks. I noticed you picked up your word pace there to fit all your, your points in. So that, that was good. I might try that technique. I must have got nervous. <laughs> um, <laughs> as well. But um, look, I know I'm biased, but there's no other agency like it in terms of the opportunity to work on such diverse yet important complex policy um, is pretty special. But ultimately, the thing that I personally believe sets the National Indigenous Australian Agency apart is, is the people. Um, if, you, if you ask that question to anyone that works here, um, the, the people care about the cause, want to make a difference, they're driven, they're motivated, um, they support each other. Um, there's a culture of continuous learning, but, you know, I think you know, a lot of people say they can work on anything as long as you're working with good people. Well, we get to work with good people, but we get to work on some really important things. So uh, the combination of those two things in, in my eyes is the perfect match. Very well put. Um, I reckon we'll, on that note, we'll call it, um, call it quits there. Thanks so much, Kelly and Connor, for a really insightful um, hour or so. Um, I definitely know I got a fair bit out of it, so hopefully um, some of the grads on the call did as well. Um, just to reiterate, applications are currently open for the program, um, if I got that correct. Um, I think they're closing pretty soon. If yeah, the 11th of April, I think. So 10 days. It's good. it's good Easter task. Yep. <laughs> um, but as I said, it's a pretty, um, the first step for our application is pretty easy um, in terms of just a CV and a, a short statement against the um, claims. So get your hat in the ring and then start to shape your thinking as you progress through the rounds is probably what the approach that you need to take. Yep, fantastic. Well, thanks to um, thanks again, Kelly and Connor. Thanks to all the grads on the call for the great questions. Um, and 
we'll see you at the at the next one potentially now thanks everyone thank you thanks thank you